Welcome to another episode of Healing is Gangster. I am Taze. I'm, regist- I'm a registered marriage and family therapist. My doctorate will be in clinical psychology. I am hip hop and the streets favorite therapist. Look it up. Catch us on Day and Death Television, exactly where you at. And if you ain't on Day and Death Television, you need to get your ass up on there. You know what I'm saying? So subscribe. Um, to my right, I have the legend himself, Mr. Dane Dash, and these are the Dane Dash sessions, where Dane Dash has, uh, you know, been able to show his process and, uh, you know, to the world, his healing, his struggles, and his tribulations. Mr. Dane Dash. What's happening? What's happening? Tell me. You know, it's crazy how my dreams are coming true. But I still feel pain. So, like, and I go through, you know, because, like, I lose people often that I know. So, you know, like, people that I really, really consider my brothers. You don't lose those so often. You know, if you lose them, you know, time, like, when, like, you know, you know stay, you just overthink. Still young. But still young. Yeah. But I go through these, these waves of sadness sometimes. I, I don't feel like I've been able to like properly mourn. You know, so sometimes I go through waves, things trigger. Mm-hmm. I think that's a natural process. Do you think it's because you've uh, been staying so busy with, you know, just with life in general that you're at that time really? Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And I knew that at the time, I was like, I can't even process this right now. Right. You know, and like, I was, I, it would be crazy because I start crying in places that would be in front of people and they wouldn't know why. I just be like, I don't deal with, you know what I mean? I just, yeah. and other people needed my strength at the time. Right, right. But I do always, you know, like, it's just like, I, I, I there's just not many people that I consider real friends for so long when I lose them. It hurts. And, and then, like, you know, I'm having this issue personally because I've gotten to know, to know, like, the OSD network, which is all these principles. Yeah. And I'm very close with them. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And, like, I see them being sent back to school, people dying and getting sick. And I have a uh, fear that one of them is going to go back to school because, like, a hundred of them, the ones will like die. I saw you addressing this on the platform the other day. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, when I start to worry about things because I know how I feel when I'm hurt, I don't want to feel that. Right. So, it, it, you know, it's like, you know, also the, uh, this week, you know, this is the week that Aaliyah died. Right. And, like, how many years ago it was, it was the worst, one of the worst days of my life. You know what I mean? And I don't want to feel that. And I remember telling the lady, don't get on that plane. And because she was concerned and she got on it anyway. I just was that day I was the more of an asshole about it. So do you feel like there's anything else more you could have given in that situation? So it was easy to have some kind of guilt or hold yourself responsible to an extent. No, no, I don't hold myself responsible. Mm-hmm. It's just based on that experience when I see other things, I just feel like sometimes I'm just going to be an asshole. Yeah. I just rather be an asshole than someone I looked at. Right. And to be clear, though, you know, I'm glad that you don't feel that way because, you know, it's not your responsibility. It's nothing that you did wrong. I just, I just feel people's pain. Yeah. And it's not like I, I don't feel like I can see the future, but logically things add up. Mm-hmm. 
and I know what it's going to feel like, and that's going to avoid those things. You know? Do you find that when you feel those things, I mean, obviously, you know, with your experiences, do you feel that it's more when you feel those things that it happens, or is it just anxiety that you feel most of the time and it doesn't it happen? Reaction, bro. Yeah. Many times, you know, it's funny because, um, like animals talking to you about pot. And I remember being in the airport with Jay and other guys, and I'm saying, the way this, this dude was going, he might get killed. I had that conversation. I had the conversation with D Rock about Biggie, like, yo, why are you out there? This shit could happen, and then Biggie out there. Six months before. Well, like I've had conversations about, I had the conversation with Leah. I don't like the plane, then don't get on it. Right. But she got on it, she died. So I've been able to see logically how things can end up and it has happened. And I've been logically been able to protect myself based on those experiments because I always tell my children, we're rock stars. We've got all our dreams come true. The gift and the curse and that is anything that can happen will happen. So you have to prepare yourself for it and make sure that you do the best you can to avoid unnecessary exposure. Or, you know, having good luck, you also have very bad luck. Absolutely. Now, with those feelings that come across when you kind of see these things or foresee, you know, or like I said, you feel anxious about these situations, how do you balance that with the things that you can control versus some of the things that are out of your control? I enjoy life to the fullest. The things I can control, I enjoy. Yeah. You know, today, I removed several trigger, triggers out of my life. Because I'm like, yo, every time certain people come around, I react a certain way, they're a trigger. Mm-hmm. And also, I've let these people know what my triggers are. So when I let people know what my triggers are, I consider those boundaries. And if you sign on to not triggering me and you still do it, then I have to eliminate you because I'm not going to feel bad. And I've, I've been able to figure out when to eliminate triggers before there's too much collateral damage. And I'm proud of myself for that. Absolutely. It should be. But I mean, in situations like you were talking about the principles, right? And you said that's, you know, worrying about them going, you know, you, you care about these people, clearly. And worrying about their, their welfare and going back to situations like this reminds you of times where you've been in a situation where you felt something and you knew that maybe this shouldn't happen and it did happen. Exactly. Now, now, and so that's what I mean when I say, how do you balance that, that, you know, that uneasiness, that anxiety that you might feel? You know, when, again, you can control whether you be an asshole or not. Clearly. I, honestly, I prepare myself for the worst. Okay. Because you can't control what they do. I just say, look, yeah. this is how I'm going to feel. I'm going to expect it. If I don't, then it becomes crazy. Right. You know, it's logically, and it's like, I just have to wear it. Yeah. But, you know, Dennis said something that made a lot of sense to me. He was like, yo, everyone has choice. Absolutely. So all these principles have choice. Mm-hmm. I'll still feel sad, but they made a choice. Yeah. And that's how it's like when I, when I deal with my friends, people I love, when they like, yo, I'm going to go and expose myself to things that can hurt me. I'm like, you're making that choice. I'm going to be in pain, but not so much pain because you have to have accountability. Right. You know, I'll be there. Like, you hurt, but so much because you're just learning a life lesson right. on your own. And I warned you. And I believe that once you're conscious, you become responsible karmically. Mm-hmm. Consciousness gives you a lot of responsibility. You can't look the other way once you know. Absolutely. So that's how you calm yourself. That's how you bring yourself back right down. Yeah. To where you're able to function. Daily. Yeah, no, I function daily because I've worn way worse pain with way yeah. closer people based on experience than used to be around. Yeah. I think it's a good lesson though for people that are um, I've dealt with clients who have, you know, those types of feelings where they worry about their family members and to a point where it affects them daily. So I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of people that are going through that, you know, that uh, that don't know how to deal with those emotions or don't know how to calm themselves and bring themselves back down to where they can't function. Well, at the end of the day, I know my priority clients when it relates to happiness. Yeah. Family first. So as long as my girl's happy, my kids are happy, 
ultimately I'm happy, but I have empathy and I care about people. I'll cry for a little while. It'll fuck my day up and I'm like, yeah. Because I also believe that life is, you know, everyone's going to die, period. Yeah. So we're all, like, either way, if you live a full life, you're going to lose people you love. And that's part of the game. It happens to everybody. And also the unknown comes with the transition. Mm-hmm. So I can't think it's bad because it happens to everybody. It's just unknown to me in this moment. Yeah. So I let life and the realities of life, I accept those things. I know that I'm a human being and I'm supposed to feel pain, but I'm still not going to let it take away from the happiness that I've created in my bubble or right. in my life. And I work really hard for that. And in between the tragedies, for like, you know, 20, 30 years, you know what I mean? And, and, and feeling good for that period of time. Like, see people that don't have tragedies feel bad for no reason. All day, every day, just miserable mm-hmm. and worried about everything. All day, I hate people that I hate worrying. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like wow, I, that's not the best. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not mad at life for that. I'm not mad at life when I feel pain that everyone else feels. I make sure I'm never mad at life. You know all the cards that that God dealt yeah. because I look at everyone else's cards and they seem way worse. So you don't question it. No, no, because it's, it's nothing that shouldn't happen. It's gonna happen. You should always anticipate and accept it when it happens. Right. And know that it's gonna hurt. It's like if you break a bone, you know it's gonna heal, but in that moment it hurts. Right. But it's part of the game. A skateboarder or some man or someone that, you know, a football player, yeah. they accept the pain because it comes with it. They know they're gonna heal, but they still feel the pain in the moment, but they don't resent that pain, they, they signed on to it. Right. So living life is signing on to dealing with losing people at some point right. or dealing with a tragedy that you I will do everything I can do to architect my life where I'm protecting the people I love and myself. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up and that's you know, you know and uh talking to somebody who's conscious because a lot of times people are not conscious of what they're feeling. And you know, it affects different parts of their life, especially when we're grieving. And that's you know, for somebody who's went through public losses, you know, uh, what would you say to somebody who who's looking at that right now? Who, you know, public loss? No, nah, just you. What I'm saying, you've been through. They've watched you go through it. You know, and, and every year, you know, clearly, even you know, with the Aaliyah situation, a lot of people, you know, she affected a lot of people's lives. You know what I mean? So there's a mourning that goes on every year, not just with you, but people that she affected. Every day. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, for somebody who's going through that kind of loss, even if it's not public, you know, because, I mean, I often find a lot of times those losses don't heal, and you just learn to deal with them differently. It evolves. Yeah. Loss comes with gain. And find a light in the dark. So everything that's painful that happens to you, the final experience, how you deal with it is how others will that believe in you. You know, there's, there's no life without loss. The reason that's part of the game. And, and a real man and a real adult way of saying. Well, no doubt. And you know, with it, with that in mind, since that day just passed. You know, I ask you when you when you think of a video, what do you think about like love? Just love. So, you know? Yeah. And my purpose of the experience I had with her so it's like I recognize it. You know. And the validation, like she by far the coolest person that ever blessed this earth. And she told me I was the coolest. Uh, that's right. So it gives me a lot of confidence, you know. Yeah. And she's an angel. And she's with me now. I feel her vibration. She hears me talk. She talks to Raquel. She talks to me. She protects my children. And she does get to be signed where it feels a little heavy. Yeah. But honestly, like, based on what I went through, those times don't feel like mm-hmm. I get that. It's part of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, wait. I've been through a lot of stuff for it. I'm 50. I'm, I'm really enjoying all my dreams. You know, 
adult, and I'm happy, and I've never not been. Even despite the tragedies or the things that happen to everyone that's happened to me. I've always evolved, I've always been productive, I still feel crispy. You know, the people around me are supportive that I love. And I'm still doing cool shit. Absolutely. And I love how in the midst of all that cool shit, you're still not afraid to, you know, show those vulnerable moments when something does hit you a certain way and express the fact that you do care about people and, you know, you don't want to see people hurt. You know, that's in this society where, you know, tough for bottle is like, you know. That, is, that shit is making a shit to me. I think it's corny that to embrace who you are. Right. I think when you hide your emotion, that means you suck. You know, I'm strong enough to cry in front of somebody and punch that same person in the face if they left. No. I cry in front of you, don't make you tough than me. Absolutely. It makes you greater than me because you hide and I'm not. We're human. So I'm not going to hide the human part of me. I'm not going to act like I don't cry. I'm not going to act like I don't feel pain. Right. You know, what the fuck? That would be ridiculous. So I embrace those things unapologetically, like everything else. I just don't feel like you should be ashamed of any any aspect of yourself. That's why I don't mind doing therapy publicly, because I have nothing to have. I think it's gangster to not give a fuck. Gangster is a complete. Yeah, I think it's gangster. That's why that's what I'm doing. Yeah, now you mentioned um uh, you mentioned your family and you know there's a lot going on, you know, you got you got something in process very important right now. Seven months later. Yeah, how's work going? Like he's happy. And it's crazy because, you know, nine months ago she was devastated. But now she's uh strong, been through something, and understand what it means to fight for something you believe in. No matter what, fearless. Life's meant to be lived. You know, fear I see often kills a lot of people's dreams. Worrying about motherfuckers that don't matter. People that are like addicted to patterns that hurt them. Why would you worry about someone that's not strong enough to be themselves? You know? Yeah. Um, what does what does Dame as a father this time do differently, if anything? Stay with the mother. You know, not be a visiting a father. You know. Yeah. Stay with the mother. Loving the mother, that's just what being a child. You know, sharing that experience and architecting that future. You know. Having a child before you die, I should have a master by now. How do you know? People, you know, you know, you know every kid is different, you know? No, but I'm an adult man. What? And once you do something, I went over again, you should get better at it. True. So every time I have a child, I should be a better father. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is to be on the same sheet of paper as the mother. Definitely. You know, and make sure that you appreciate the mom, like what I've done different. This time and any other time, it's just really being in awe of creation of life like God and making sure in that one second of that is uncomfortable for the person that I love. Right. And enjoying watching her happy, watching something that she loves, as well as I grow inside of her organically. Yeah. And it's a beautiful. Any special things you're looking forward to as far as just, you know, your child that's coming into the world? Any part of uh, smell, change, diapers, you know, just chilling. Just being a family. You know? All right. Everything I'm doing right now is architecting for that, preparing for that, making sure every single person I love is happy. On our terms. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I remember the game before I learned just put things in perspective for me. Yeah. Yeah, I see how you enjoy life. You know what I mean? Every struggle I feel like you went through with some of your children don't have to go through it, and I feel like you're enjoying everything you're doing. Oh, absolutely. Hmm. They make it work. You know, we were talking about pain before, and um, I know when I look at my kids, it makes the pain work. It's like, 
ele não tem a menor pena de não. O Chico tinha o doutor, esse mensor. Então, o Chico tinha o doutor, esse mensor. Então, eu acho que, pessoalmente, olhando para eles, isso faz muito bem. Posso ampliar, mas não. Eu acho que o homem não tem nada a ver com a guerra. Eu acho que you know, during this COVID, I've been able to be so productive. You know, I've done so much shot movies, like poor albums, television shows, or sustained. People got paid, no one had to skip a beat. I got stronger, faster, leaner, and profitable. And this is crazy because, you know, in this moment, all I gotta do is stay healthy. Mm. But every single other thing, the snowball effect of successfulness, it's like I told you so, everything I haven't said. And I know I bet I took the right pill. You know? Yeah. And it, it, you know, what I, what I like to see too and what you're doing is that it's creating purpose and, and inspiration for others. You know, we were recently on a panel where you did a screening for the OG stories. And, you know, one thing that kept coming to my mind, you know, when uh, y'all you know, was talking about, you know, getting people like him to go to the school and talk to the kids and things like, uh, like that. And what, what kept coming to my mind is that through this work, you're getting people that are re-entering really society on a rough life and new purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, not to take away anything that we've just done for ourselves, but giving people the opportunity Nice. The voice of story gives a yeah. See how happy he gets when the opportunity presents itself for him to like talk to kids. Yeah. And, um, Automatic. It was hype. Automatic. How does that feel for you? I love it. You know, it just means that none of their experiences went in vain. Yeah. And there was a purpose for their experiences and their struggles, so other people don't have to go through it. Yeah. And I always, I always tell people too that one of the most therapeutic things that you can do for yourself is help somebody else. Always. Like the happiness that you feel from that is like unmatched. It's good for you, like it's good for your health. It's called to help other people. It's called love. Yeah. It's dangerous for you to hate on other people, like health wise. You know what I mean? And I wish people would get that equation a little bit more, but I guess that's why we're here. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's why we're having fun with that. Yeah. You know, but I love, I love that part of what you're doing, you know, because purpose is so important in life, you know, without purpose. You know, it's easy to go straight, especially when you come from a situation like that. Where you're coming out of prison and, you know, you're re entering society and all this craziness is going on. You're just like, damn, where do I start? When you have that purpose and that drive where you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, it makes that path a lot easier. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So, congrats on that, bro. That's, that's real shit. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been trying to tell everybody, like, love protects you. Love is the best currency. And giving it means you get it back. You know? There'll be a test always that's about faith. Um, and uh, once you get through that, <coughs> things are relatively smooth. Right, right. And the tests that are presented, they're usually ego tests, so, like, physically, it's about how you feel about your perspective on it, but usually it's not that bad, you know? Yeah. Right now. I've been able to shoot these movies. I'm shooting, I'm about to start one next week. I finished the one that I started. Completion is a big deal for me. You know, celebrating, finishing. Finishing, support. Yeah, I get around a lot of people that start shit every day, but they never, ever finish. Ideas with no completion. Yeah. But like, Completion is like a birthday, Christmas, a holiday. It's always a celebration when I complete. Uh, and it I seems like you have never had a problem finishing. I, it, it's that I started a million things and only finished 100,000. Uh -huh. Right. right. You know? Oh, that's interesting coming from how you see it. Yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, that's something, that's something I think people need to hear more. Because from the outside looking in, you think, right? Like, man, this dude is, it, it accomplished a lot. But to you, it's like, man, I've only done like, what, 5% of the things you think about? I've only completed about 5% of the things I started. Yeah. That means I've started a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. 
but looking back from when you started, right? Because people have seen you publicly accomplish a lot of things. Is there a difference in your drive now and what your goal is now from then? How does it differ from people who don't know? From Dan Dash from 2000 or from the 90s to right now, what is the direct, how's the direction change? It is very wrong, but there's no anxiety of missing something. I think that, you know, there was a time where I felt like every second I had to be working toward my dream. Mm -hmm. But in this moment, I think I think it laid out so much I could, like, you know, I have things scheduled to relax, go relax. I'm still work. Yeah. I mean, now we can, like, you know, like in life, you throw a lot of shit on the wall and see what sticks. Right. But I threw a lot of shit on the wall. I know exactly what's stuck, and I'm focused on that. And right. because I know I don't have to, like, be inside that, like, what's going to happen next? Like, you know, sometimes you surf a wave and you don't know what wave is coming, but you know you're going to surf it. Right now, I feel like I'm architecting the wave. And, and, and the surf the, the surf thing is not even it's that's not the thing I or you know do you find it easier to focus on what you you know there's less anxiety or you're not at such a feverish hundred percent yeah I know how to prioritize and focus on those things first or hundred percent is that what you would tell like a young entrepreneur just getting into whatever they're entrepreneuring like to kind of don't be so urgent. I mean, the hustle will stay on it, but at the same time, leave that space to be able to kind of calmly focus and relax and see what you're I think at a very young age, you just throw as much shit on the wall as possible to see this thing. Okay. But at some point, like in your 20s, late 20s, yeah. you gotta start thinking about, like, if it's not sticking, you gotta try something. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? When you're young, it's cool. Yeah. But at a certain age, you know, as your brain develops more, it's time to be responsible and provide life and, you know, do what yields for not only you, but the people you love. Yeah. Yeah, I find that too. It's, it's only I can be a little selfish when you're young. Yeah. You know, but, oh, absolutely. I mean, I think you can be a little more reckless when you're younger, especially if you have less responsibilities. It's way cool. Yeah. 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 Seeing an old man doing young shit is real cool. Yeah. Seeing a young cat doing young shit is cool. Yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt. So, um, what else is resting on Mr. Dash's shoulders? Is we, I mean, it's a lot, it's, has, have you been affected by the things that have been, it's a lot that's been going on. I mean, all year, it seems like every week is something happening, whether it's politics or. I'm going to say that I like this generation a lot. I like the athletes this year. I, I feel like I have a, a part in, in the mentality of the younger people that aren't looking the other way either. So I like the way basketball and the football and the soccer plays are like, yo, Black Lives Matter. Take your responsibility. We're not going to play this week. Yeah. Because in a funny way, I think Trump was the best thing that ever happened for the planet. Because it exposed a lot of things people were hiding. And it made us address things that we were uh, not. You know? Sometimes you got to destroy the real. The people that are in jail right now, for certain things, would not be in jail with Mm -hmm. So now he's a great guy, but based on the fact that he tried to do such bad things, I think comedy is backfiring on him. And the exact opposite has happened. We well, thought he was going to make bad, strong, good, actually realize that it's time to fight. I think he's underestimated the, uh, the good a little bit. It's just about that time. But you know, again, we've been in the hell of children. They didn't know the power. We've been, we've been working on perspective and the narrative I have in a very sly way. And I see my effect on the world and I feel good. Absolutely. I think, our, you know, a big lesson I think people take from this is that you can take the agency no matter what level of life you're at. You know, whether you're in athletics, music, politics, or you're just going to school, or you're just, you know, living your life. There's many ways to take agency and take the power back and not just rely on what the, the media or the world is giving. You know, and I think that's one thing that, you know, we stand strong on here. You know, take the responsibility for yourself. And also the shit I'm cooking up with the talk. It's gonna shape up the world. I promise you, this is about to be a fun 12 months. 
you have any, you have any previews, anything you want to talk about with Oregon? Are you just going to just let it count? I mean, I can't wait to let out or showcase what I've done with Kanye. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to showcase everything I've done here. Yeah. And uh, the future. It's just funny, man, because, you know, the mentality of the people around me in my bubble is a bang in mentality. And it's actually realized itself. Actually seeing it realize itself, it's great. What's the thing you never inside when you say that? What does that entail? Make it big. This is this is just billion dollars? I know it's a, I know it's more than that. Well my billion dollar mentality would be happy and make a billion dollars liquid right. cash. Right. Some people's happiness is different than mine. Yeah. But at the end of the day, our profitability, you know, it's it's, it's not it's not questionable. Yeah. The students of mine, you can read about them in Forbes. Yeah, I um, mean that's we're gonna talk right there. Where it's out. Yeah, man. I mean, and you can read about me as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's ever a time where you don't look like there's a lot on your mind, but today you look like there's a lot on your mind, bro. And I know it's 50 million things, and I don't want to just pick one. But, but it seems like you're wearing something right now. Is it good or is it bad? It's like when things are going so good, I'd be like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. But right now, she's going crazy, but... Are you all right? Is that making you nervous? Yeah, I'm never nervous. I'm just curious. You know? Uh, I'm not mad. You're not looking around the corner like, where this bad shit at? Where this bad shit is going to creep up? Well, no, I'm looking for it. Yeah. But, you know, I'm prepared. No matter what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm going to go out on my ship. But... I'm trying my best to do right. And I'm investing and I planted certain seeds and the fruits are from patience and faith and confidence. And you know, knowing that you're doing right mean everything. Absolutely. Um, you fight for love, you're gonna win. And you're gonna be tested, but it's not as long as one thing. Cause I've been testing when the shit was whack. Like that was a test. That shit was whack. Yeah. For real. Based on what we went through for bullshit, it's funny. The tests for the big game, they're not that tough. It's just about moral, morals and principles. Yeah. And that's why it's so easy for me. I mean, me personally, I, I now I don't, I don't necessarily, I never figured out schools, but sometimes I would dread them, especially if they were, if things were going good. Now I've changed my mentality to where I look forward to the shit. I look forward to the fight, you know? And, I, and, I was, and I've heard you say that a lot of times, you know, and I like that you reinforce that because it makes it easier for me personally to deal with obstacles. Like, I look forward to the fight. I look forward to the obstacle. And, you know? it, and when it comes, to not even obstacle. Yeah. Because the people that oppose you, your ops, are usually unprepared. Or, you know, because it, it is that line between being prepared but then Again, being, you know, having anxiety, you want to be prepared. You know what I'm saying? Look forward to your obstacles, look forward to those challenges because when you bust through that wall, you're coming out much more stronger. You feel me? And look good while you do it. Absolutely. Gotta stay fly. Stay fly. You feel me? So, with that being said, you already know healing is gangster. Tune in every week. The healing is gangster, and the healing is gangster, the value substance. And we'll be here for you. Wow. Why? If you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.